And you can see, we're basically standing on it, the restored streets the, the, that were lost in the 1960s in urban renewal are cleared and they are starting to take shape. They too will be open in 2026. And because of this inspiring project, we have been able to go out and secure tens of millions of dollars of federal funds to rebuild and upgrade both Bank Street and Cherry Street in the years that follow. You know, last time we had an event here was in November of 2015, and we got gathered, you know, kind of like this to note the, the groundbreaking for the project. And at that time, what did I say? 2022. Oh my gosh. Let me start that again. Last time we gathered here was in November of, of 2022, when the City Place partners were breaking ground. And, you know, I made a point at that time, which, uh, you know, looking back on the long history of this project, I realized, you know, I always knew, but if I had to do all these events over again, one of the few things I would change is to emphasize further for Burlingtonians how the uncertainty and the uh, complexity of development projects and the possibility for, for delays and that we had planned for them, but that they were possible. Um, and I said, you know, 18, 15 months ago, uh, when we got to that long-awaited step of the groundbreaking, that further setbacks and delays were still possible. <clears throat> With all of the risk and complexity of this project, however, <clears throat> we have made enormous progress on the ground in those 15 months, as you can see. Um, in that time, Vermont and the country have been battling inflation and interest rates rising to the highest levels we've seen in decades. But through all that, we have been fortunate. City Place Partners, Dave, Scott, Al, they have forged ahead with rare courage, determination, and commitment to this community. Burlington is very fortunate that these three men and their teams have made investing big in Burlington's downtown a big part of their life's work. So with that, um, Dave, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, just, I think we want to start right off by saying the City Place Partners of Dave, Al, and Scott uh, want to welcome the Jerry Group. Uh, we've got a couple of representatives here, Ash and Encore. Um, so that's part of the announcement that, um, you know, we, when we started out, we bought this project in the spring of 2022, uh, bought out a, another partner, and we knew we were going to be looking to bring somebody in to help us. This is a huge, huge job. It's uh, like Moreau pointed out, you know, the, the full scope of this thing is in excess of $200 million. It just, it takes a lot of time and money and effort and energy. And uh, although we we're all up for the challenge, we knew we we're gonna need some help. And uh, believe me, we looked, we had uh, a lot of people come and go and come and go, and we just couldn't find the right partner. And then um, towards the end of last year, um, we got lucky to meet the, the Jiri group and um, started working out a deal and um, completed that towards the end of the year. And uh, so we brought in some strong partners. We really feel that uh, we're all like-minded. We all have the same energy and passion for this. And um, so we're real happy with it. And how we got here was, uh, you know, as Moreau had mentioned, the, uh, the high construction costs, interest rates, uh, the, the kind of shaky lending environment that's going on right now. Um, we, we couldn't really figure out this project, this piece of it without some help. And we had to kind of shake up our, our thought process. And we started thinking about um, how are we gonna make this work on, on paper so the banks will step up and, um, and participate. So uh, we went back to the original concept. It's kind of ironic. This was originally designed as a hotel, and then it left. And then we started thinking about bringing it back, and here we are. We've, uh, we've, we went through the process to get the state approvals, city, city approvals. And um, you know, we've got the partners now that have uh, great experience in, in operations and development of hotel uh, properties. Um, so we're, we're feeling ultra confident we've always been confident about the project we're going to get this done and uh, now we're feeling better we've got we got some support and help uh, from our new partners um, 
and we're we're pretty much we're on good schedule on this somebody asked i think brian pine asked he says how are you doing for schedule i said i think we're at least three hours ahead of schedule right now <laughs> so we're going to keep that up um we're going to get this building finished up um first quarter of 2025 and then like moreau had said we get the foundation in the ground for the north building and um that's about two-thirds done and you'll be seeing steel like we did here in maybe July or August of this summer. And you'll start seeing that building going up and that'll be completed probably the summer of 2026 along with the roads. And uh, part of this the development agreement, uh, one of the items on that was an extension of some previously agreed to dates. We were supposed to have everything done end of 2025 um, and we're asking to just kick it out about six more months so we can take advantage of building as much as we can over the winter and then tidying up the roads the uh, streetscape and all that in the uh, spring and early summer of 2026 so that's where we're headed Al you want to say something no it just it's been a it's been a very very interesting experience for me for sure and um, couldn't ask for a better original partnership with Scott and Dave and, and the Jerry group since they've come on. I mean, like Dave said earlier, they're very much like-minded. The, they build the same way as, as we do. They, they just work the same way as we do. So it's a great partnership and I don't think anyone has to be afraid of this partnership being successful. And uh, at that, we'll leave it to anyone else that wants to speak. I think uh, I would say thank you everyone. Um, thank you. CPP partners, thank you, the community, and also thank you, Mayor's Office, for all the support. I think, uh, like everyone is touching upon this like-minded approach, I think like-minded people coming together. Um, I'll just give you a brief uh, introduction that when we were first looked at this deal, uh, end of January last year, uh, it was a dark night. Uh, all those factors, economic factors, was against us. And only three lines which comes out of my mind, like come off my memory, three lines came out of this wonderful gentleman right here. Uh, one was, failure is not an option. Second is, we gotta get this done. Third thing is, everybody's counting on us. That pride, that courage took us through this. And I think um, we are just very excited to be part of this project. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, just a brief word, I just want to say it's been a great experience working with my partners, Dave and Al, and of course Patrick, Mike will call him a partner, he's been pretty key to this whole operation here, and I just want to thank the mayor and, and Karen and the city for working through this with us, and we're going to bring a great project to the city and hopefully uh, many projects to follow here. So thank you very much. Thank you for that, Scott. I want to say thank you to the whole city team that, that's worked on this, only part, a few of whom are, are here today. Certainly, uh, Brian Pine and the, the CETO team have uh, been, a, been a large part of this for many years. We've al also worked with many, uh, <clears throat> many skilled local partners, including David White and Tim Sampson, who uh, have, are, the, are the current, current, current embodiment embodiment of the team, um, not the first team that we've had working on this project since it began almost a decade ago. Um, I also wanna, I, 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 I met Ash for the first time um, uh, longer than a year ago. It was, uh, I think, approximately two years ago when uh, he actually showed up at one of my um, Wednesday morning uh, open coffees at, at, the, uh, at the Bagel Cafe out in the New North End. and. He was there to introduce himself at the time um, because he and his partners were very interested in Burlington and they had already taken a step to get site control um, of the old YMCA at the, at the time. And I think it's an important part of the history for people to understand how long the Jiri group has been interested in Burlington, has understood that this is a place uh, where they want to make investments um, and that the way things have sorted out here, uh, there are going to be now two hotels uh, at this site. Um, the planned hotel, which was initially permanent and planned at the old YMCA site, however, with them leaving that site, has uh, is now um, permanent and on its way to becoming uh, 
homes for almost uh, 100 Burlington households. What's that? Student housing. So, um, with that, let's see, just a couple more uh, things I want to mention about kind of how this works from here, the mechanics of how this works from here. So, the, the partners have finalized this plan over, you know, which really wasn't the case when we gathered 15 months ago, as Dave just described. They were figuring it out. They've now figured it out. They've committed to this current plan for the whole site. They've gone back through the permitting process and have secured those permits. Um, we now, at the uh, mayor, city council level, we have, we have a development agreement that um, uh, has changed a couple of times over the years. The most recent amendment to it was also right around maybe maybe in october or november of 2022 and what we said to the council and the public at the time was that it was very likely that that development agreement was going to need to change we we were doing our best we all did our best at the time to project where the project was going but it was clear that they were still figuring elements of this out um, and on a big complex project like this there was likely to be changes we have now made those amendments to the development agreement. We've discussed those changes in executive session with the city council a couple times over recent months. Um, we have available for the media now, we'll be posting to the city's website today, the updated agreement and the uh, <clears throat> um, a memo that summarizes the, the changes between this agreement and, and uh, the earlier version. Um, and um, we, uh, I, I, I'm grateful City Council President Karen Paul is here, and it is, it is my hope that the council will take quick, quick action on this and approve it to re resolve one of the last remaining sort of uncertainties uh, about, the, um, about, about the project and, and further do the city's part to ensure that this proje project will move forward at full steam from here. The city's doing two other things at the city council meeting on Monday that are related and I think worth noting. One is um, we are awarding two public art contracts for the public spaces uh, around the project. The, this was um, a combination of an effort that started many years ago when the project first began construction in 2018. It had to pause back then after we had started the artist selection process when the, when the project paused. It now has been restarted and we um, partially opened it up for new uh, submissions as well. And so um, you will see in the materials being posted today, both one artist from the initial competition a couple years ago, as well as a new artist uh, that um, will be awarded funding on Monday. The city, the Board of Finance reviewed this last week and it was unanimously endorsed. And another exciting thing that we'll be doing on Monday that is related to this is that uh, we will we are, rec we are asking the city council to accept the $22 million raise grant from the federal government that, um, you know, we announced that we had been awarded this uh, some time ago, but we've now worked through all the details in our position to uh, formally accept the grant award. This is a very rare federal award that comes with no local match requirements and um, will mean, again, that um, we are very well positioned to do what we said we would do uh, when we went to voters in 2016 of, of build, rebuilding the public infrastructure, not just around this block, but on much of Cherry Street and Bank Street as well. We may, with the additional federal money, actually be able to do even more than what was uh, initially laid out in as the maximum vision of eight blocks. We're, we're now hoping we might be able to get done as much as 10 blocks, depending on exactly how what happens in the years to come. With that, I, uh, if you guys don't want to add anything more, I think we, uh, we'll take some questions. So I think the project last year had something proposed maybe like 480 units of housing. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but this new proposal scales back the housing you know, by maybe like 100 units, adds a hotel. Given Vermont's housing crisis, I mean, is another hotel really appropriate and why not look for ways to invest in making all that housing available instead of reducing the amount of housing in this Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit and then let you get into the, so, you know, the, um, the project has shifted a number of times uh, over the years as we've been working towards today. So the, uh, there was a prior version of the development agreement, not the one that was uh, approved in, in November of 2022, that it projected about 270 homes. 
the, the November 22 agreement, if I get this, I hope I get it exactly right, it projected a range of about 400, 420 to, it did say that more was possible, but it would put it in a range. So, you know, what we are coming forward with now is more than the original vision. It is modestly less than the um, total number of homes that was hoped for in November of 2022. It, um, uh, the square footage, if you compare the two between hotels and um, in long-term permanent housing, it's, it's almost two to one permanent housing to the hotel square footage. And um, uh, what um, I think is a big difference between uh, what we are coming forward with now and where we were in the fall of 22 is just how far, much farther along and much more closer to reality this is. And so I'm, to me, this is still one of the largest, literally second only to Cambrian Rise in the, in the total number of homes that, will, uh, that um, has ever been built in one project. It, um, it, and I see it as very positive that it also, in addition to being the second largest housing project in the city's history, that it has two hotels is good, very good for the city in a number of ways. It means more money that flows to the city in terms of property taxes, in terms of gross receipts, and to local businesses. The reason we have such a great city with so many great places to eat, art to see, other amenities, is because it is a place that visitors enjoy and invest in as well. And uh, so um, I, I fully support, you guys know, no one, I don't think anyone's been louder about the need for, for housing in the state of Vermont than, than I have been over the last 12 years. This, in its total package, is a huge win for housing, and I hope uh, my colleagues on the council fully see it that way. Yeah, want... I, I agree, and it's a simple... Uh, I step a little closer to the mic there. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, economics of the project. We, we wouldn't be able to have built the original project under the conditions that we now had, you know, way different from 2020 when we were looking at it. The whole world changed, and between the construction costs and interest rates, this is an economic move that we had to do if we wanted this project to, to keep going on. And it's uh, like Moreau had said, I think we're, we were permitted for up to 422 housing units. And now we're saying it'll be no less than 350 housing units. So that's, that's 70 units. Um, but if we didn't bring in this hotel component, there'd be zero units. So that's how, we're, uh, that's how we look at it. And it's just that's the way it's got to be. Well, and in terms of the affordable housing, is Champlain Housing Trust still developing the nope. third building? No, nope. we're going to be doing that ourselves. Um, what happened with that? Uh, again, economics, um, mostly construction costs, interest rates, and um, what that deal uh, would have resulted in is us selling forever a piece of land, basically, that we would have no uh, future economic income from and that was detracting from the the package the whole financial package of it so we felt it was better to even though we're going to meet all the the iz requirements and all the uh rental rates and i'm not i'm not the expert on that patrick is right here yeah no that patrick <laughs> um we we decided we'd we'd rather retain ownership so we'd have the long-term income and that would just help chip away at the at the rock that we got here and um and just in selling it at what we felt was a you know pretty discounted price for that land value we decided we we're just going to do it ourselves. we build it at our costs um you know in the end um it that departure with the chc relationship helped us get to where we had to be on the on the project we'll still be delivering the 20 percent iz units at the affordable rates that uh are required liam will uh just uh, at the uh, we we put out a press release on this about um it was in early december and to paint the full picture that what what overall what this means for affordable housing is is again is 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 more it's it's a win for affordable housing so the the 70 units that will be built here on site, they have no public funding commitments to them. 
Um, perhaps these guys will ap apply for some small amounts of, of state or federal programs that are out there, but they're going forward with this with no public financing commitments. The, um, the Champlain Housing Trust has pivoted to adding an additional uh, project at Cambrian Rise and is attempting to take the public subsidies that had been um, committed to this project is, is pursuing a new, new project over there. The net sum of that hopefully will mean, I think there's a good chance of it, will mean is that overall I think it's a net increase about 180 uh, permanently affordable units. And the part of the Cambrian Rise project involves permanently affordable ownership um, ownership units. The um, I, I think it's worth noting um, that this almost never happens that the inclusionary zoning units get built without public subsidy. It's been a major problem with the housing market in Burlington for a long time, um, and these guys are going forward and have found a way to build. Uh, one of the very largest inclusionary zoning projects in the city's history and to do it um, with, uh, without public money. Oh, another benefit, thank you, Karen, a, a really good point, is where um, the CHT project envisioned a um, one building on the west side of the project that would have all the inclusionary zoning units in it. The new plan, uh, correct me if I... Don't say this quite right, Patrick, but it is the north building will have all 70 uh, of the of the of the units, assuming that project stays on schedule. If somehow that were to fall behind, you will see in the agreement, um, you know, in in a very unexpected scenario where that project does not get, does not get built for some time, this this building would have to meet the inclusionary zoning requirements, and that's written into this updated uh, development agreement. So there'll be 70, 70 permanently. Previously, it was estimated about 84, I believe. Um, so, uh, yeah. 14 less, but very good chance of uh, the active work going on on new affordable units with that financing up the road. And, and Jimmy is no longer involved with the line project? The, uh, the two hotels plan. Yeah, the plan is uh, for, for this is the south building. They're going to be occupying. Oh, sorry, they'll be occupying uh, their their jump lobby, as it's known, is going to be up on level one, which is first level above grade, and then they'll be on five floors above that for the the hotel rooms, and then the balance of the building will be uh, regular apartments. And then in the north building, the program has them in the northwest corner coming down Pine Street, and then the balance of this building along Cherry and down the new St. Paul Street will be the residential component. With, with retail throughout the whole ground floor, nothing's changed on the, the retail uh, program. All right, looks like, uh, looks like we've ex exhausted you guys. So thank you all for being here. And um, again, uh, I do recommend, I know Catherine's done it. If uh, I did it once, uh, you know, if you can find a way to get up to the higher floors, it's a, it's a unique uh, view of the city. I encourage you to work with these guys and, uh, and check it out. So thank you all for being here today. We'll talk to you again soon. My name is Karen Long and I've lived in Burlington for 46 years. Um, I was very active when the city wanted to tear down the mall and change the height limit to 14 stories. I thought that was too much. Um, we now have a 10 story building and I'm very, very disappointed to hear we're gonna have two hotels. We need housing. They're pushing housing all over the city, and I feel like this is a bait and switch. And a secret. I just found out this morning that there was a press release. Thank you. Well, it's, it's disappointing in some ways that the housing component has been reduced to be replaced by 
hotels. But I have to, uh, you know, I guess d defer to the people involved that if that's what the financing requires, maybe that's what needs to be done. And say Farrington said, if it weren't for that component, then the housing wouldn't be able to happen either. So I, so I, so I appreciate that. But I do find that the neighborhood code uh, amendment that is being uh, considered and, uh, and fast-tracked in, in City Hall is uh, a, a housing effort that will in many ways, I think, diminish neighborhoods in the name of affordable housing uh, and without any affordable component at all. And so I think that needs to be looked at again because it's, it's not a amendment that will really help the city in its housing crisis or, or in, in, in any other way. The housing in, in a project like this or in other larger projects downtown that don't contribute to the environmental damage of uh, increased lot coverage and increased runoff and sewage overflows, those kind of projects include 15 or 20 percent affordable units. Uh, the neighborhood code does not do anything for affordable units and in fact it enables uh, predatory kinds of uh, rental units such as we have in some of the student dominated areas. All right, so I want to thank you. Uh, thanks all the people who are working behind this on this hour, day in, day out. I want to thank Dave, Scott, Al, Patrick to build, got this building to this level without even a bank loan until now. So I want to thank them for their courage and pride for the Burlington. And I want to thank all the community for their support. Thank you all. Oh, my name is Ash Sangani. I'm part of Giri Hotels. Yes, I'm Karen Paul, uh, a City Councilor, Ward 6, and I currently serve as City Council President. And uh, today was an exciting day, um, another step forward in uh, the City Place development, and um, this will be coming to the City Council next week. And uh, we've been talking about this for quite a while, the amended and revised development agreement. Uh, we call it ARTA 2.0. Um, that we'll talk about um, all of the things that we heard today. So the development is moving along and I, th I can't remember now who it was, but somebody said that we're moving on schedule. We're only three hours, I think we're three hours ahead. Um, and this is an exciting project. I think the, the one thing that I just would like for, um, uh, like to say is that this project has gone, undergone a lot of iterations and I, I'm excited and have been excited about the three city place partners. Um, like many of the other developments that are going on in the city, the, the bottom line is that when you want projects to get done and you want them to get done right, you look to the local people who are invested in a love of Burlington to make these a reality. And I am grateful to Al, to Scott, um, and to Dave and to the new partners from the jury group uh, to make this a reality.